early Saturday morning. I am, uh, hopefully that video gives a little bit of a flavor, but I'm very passionate about the subject of gratitude and how it can help you navigate uh, challenging times in life and just just navigate life in general many case, in many cases. I call this conquering quarantine fatigue through gratitude. And it is a very active or interactive talk. So, and I'm not a big PowerPoint person, but I ask everybody, so like right off the bat, high five if you can like hear me loud and clear. If it's, if it's getting through, yep, a bunch of high fives, thank you. Uh, every once in a while I get some group and there's like one person I go, is anybody paying attention? Like, how did I find these people? So, and it's so funny because in Zoom, when most cases the uh, microphones are, are muted, for doing this for such a long, well, maybe 10 years now, that you don't hear any of the reactions. So in, in the live audience, you'll be talking to people and you'll say something that's funny and people are laughing and they're looking at it and their eyes are wide and they're nodding their heads. And in Zoom, you just see, but you don't hear anything. So it's like very strange, it's like very surrealistic. So, but this, as I mentioned, is very interactive. So you're gonna need a couple of things right off the bat. You need a piece of paper, you need a pen or a pencil, you need your cell phone and your aforementioned hand because uh, it's gonna be, uh, as I say, interactive. Like, and I always tell people, it's very interactive, not act like you're interested because you're gonna get the most out of this if you participate in the event and so forth. But I will tell you when I started this, as I say, eight or 10 years ago, I used to go into a lot more detail about uh, the loss I'd experienced in my life. And I don't do that as much anymore, uh, other than suffice it to say that along the way, I lost my mother at a fairly young age. Then I lost my father uh, to suicide. And then I lost my wife to a prescription pill overdose and a number of other losses. And I'm certainly aware of the group that I'm talking to today about loss. And I just figured out at some point, I'm gonna to have to find something that's gonna help me. And it ultimately ended up being a number of things, certain supportive friends and so on, but really gratitude played such a big important role in this. And it started out with at least that relationship you have with the person in the mirror. And people that have a big faith, it's very true, whether it's God or Jesus or your, your creator, or however you wanna be, whatever that relationship is, that's fantastic. But up at, at or near the top of that list is the relationship you have with the person in the mirror. And it starts so much based on how you see that person. And we're going to do an exercise in a second that'll do, there's going to be probably four or five exercises here in the next half hour that'll kind of show you and illustrate how that relationship you have with yourself can help you deal with so many things in life. And I know as an example, I was, I was um, in terms of having the uh, excuse me, that how you look at something is, and, and some people look at themselves, they see somebody different, and then they see a different person, they present a different person, and so forth. But how you see yourself, and how you picture that, and how you look at something is so incredibly important. We all know negative people, optimistic people, people that see the glass half full, half empty, and I'll tell you, uh, as an example, I was used to run a lot of 10Ks, and so I was running a race from Medina in Bellevue across the floating bridge up to Husky Stadium. And it was 6.2 miles. And I remember getting, I'd been running quite a bit and I was running across the uh, bridge and I was about halfway across the bridge starting to come up towards where these fountains were. And there's all these people in front of me. And, and I just was just, you know, I just thought, what has happened? These little kids are running by me, you know, and I thought, I thought it was in pretty good shape. And so, but as I'm running along, it occurs to me to look behind me, which is not easy to do when you're running. So I kind of turn around and look, and there's just thousands of people all the way past the bridge up to the where the old toll plaza is up towards Medina. And I turned back around and so I'm back running, I'm a little inspired and I thought, it just occurred to me that very second, if all these people in front of me weren't here, I would be in first place. And I mean, what if those people just all those, just decide that we're not going today, we're not gonna to go to the foot race, we're not gonna make it, guess who'd be out front? It would be me. So it depends on how you look at something. And so it's so important. So I wanna start with this first exercise, get your piece of paper and your pen and I call this the you are exercise. So up somewhere in the upper left-hand corner, write these two words, you are, Y-O-U-A-R-E. You are. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you, oh, I mean, 30 to 60 seconds maybe, maybe closer to 60. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to imagine for a second, this is your mother or your father, their writing, or your biggest cheerleader. Somebody who just thinks, I'm trying to think, was I looked across the names, I saw Lori, Marsha, Andy, Leanne, and Myra, and so forth, Gail. This is your biggest cheerleader, or again, your mom or your dad, if you have a good relationship with them, how they describe you, how they see you. You are 
fantastic, you are intelligent, you are bright, you are articulate. However that person would describe you, write as many things as you can, as fast as you can, I'll give you 30 seconds, go. Okay, and stop. And of course, you can also have to try to keep these things moving along. Some people only write one or two things and then they sit and look at me and they go, that's all you got for what you think of yourself, how you describe yourself. So now it took you, a few, it took you 30 or 40 seconds to write those things down. Now I want you to silently reread them again and then tell me if you feel better. Reread those five or 10 things that you've said, you've written about, that they've said about you, how they describe you. And with a high five, if you feel better, put a high five in the screen. Yep, pretty much, pretty much everybody. Yep, oh, everybody ends up. When I do that live, I actually have people pair up and it's phenomenal how somebody else sees somebody. And it's my way, so every single person did the high five that shows that it impacts them in a positive way. So then my question is, myself included, why are we so incredibly hard on ourselves? I don't understand it. Why does somebody else see us, in this case, our mother or father, our biggest cheerleader, in such a better light than we see ourselves? You know, I was looking at the screen and I get to see these ones where there's 25 screens and they go back and forth, these big Zoom meetings. I'm looking at different people and I'm looking at Monica and Adonis and I've known them a long time. And I'm thinking in the time that I've known them, it's, it's probably, it didn't last much longer after that, but before that, there was a time I would call myself a word that I will not even say anymore, but I'll spell it for you. And I look in the mirror and think you're such an L-O-S-E-R. And it hit me one day and I thought, what kind of situation is that? What kind of relationship do you have with yourself if you're calling yourself an L-O-S-E-R? If you can't advocate for yourself, who's going to advocate for you? So how we see ourselves and what gratitude does is gratitude helps you to focus on everything that you have instead of what you don't have. One of my favorite lines is, gratitude turns what you have into enough. It's so incredibly important. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. Where Adonis and Monica and I met back at Nordstrom days and all these people and rich people and poor people and fancy people and people thought they were cool and all that kind of thing. But you know what? We're constantly making that subconscious comparison to somebody else and it's ridiculous. It's like a cat chasing its tail. And as far as people and how you look at something, let's just look at coronavirus for a second because I talked about this is conquering quarantine fatigue Somebody said to me at a talk, okay, Mr. Gratitude Guy, what's good about coronavirus and what's good about COVID-19? And I said, and so I actually wrote some things down. I do videos all the time, as you can see on YouTube. I do two or three a day usually. Silver linings from coronavirus, the technology, the computers, the webinars, these Zoom calls. Monica has mentioned Monica, uh, Microsoft Teams and, and GoToMeeting. There's all these different ways, all these apps that we have and so forth. This extra time with family. People are getting time that they never spent with their kids. And yeah, I know it's been intense. The kids aren't in school, but they're getting to spend time with those kids they'll never forget. And the rest of their life, the advances in science, they're getting closer to a vaccine. That may not have happened 20 or 30 years ago. The social connection, family dinner time is making a comeback. That's amazing. When I grew up, we had dinner every single night, all seven of us, and it was really cool. And we're going to appreciate the face-to-face. The -face. We get to see this, but what happens to the, the hugs and the handshakes? Everywhere I go, it's this now, when you see with your mask on and so forth, and the eye contact, and as the smiles, and some of that we'll appreciate more because of, of how this makes us think of it. The efficiencies, I had the, the, the people, I'll go drive an hour to have a, a coffee at Starbucks and then meet with them and drive an hour back to Issaquah. I've spent three hours for a one hour meeting. Now it's Zoom, it's one hour and you've saved two hours. So the efficiencies are incredible how much this is gonna change us as we go forward. These conveniences, I haven't been in a grocery store in like four or five months. I get Amazon Fresh, knock, knock. There's the stuff at the door. It's like so cool. And then this whole sense that we're all in it together. And then my final thing is I'm so passionate as if you can't tell about gratitude 
that it forces you, helps you, guides you to realign your priorities. What is really important? You know, when we stop and you go through a pandemic like this, you, you stop and you think, wow, I gotta, I gotta rethink some of this stuff. And so it's really, really critical to see the glass half full. I get it that there aren't gonna be people that see the glass half full. I honestly, it sounds a bit strange to say, but I'm one of the more positive people you're ever gonna meet. And I came from one of the most negative people you're ever gonna meet. My father was one of those people I'd go in the morning, good morning, dad. And he'd go, what's good about it? And this is somebody who eventually took his own life. And, and so I thought, wow, you have a choice every day. It's left or right, up or down, red or black, good or bad. I mean, you get to have a ch choice. You, every one of you ladies and Adonis and myself, every one of us gets to make that choice every single day. And, and it was just amazing. I was saying to Monica when we first jumped on, uh, I'm in my condo and it's a blue sky out here. And it's a beautiful day. I'd say to my dad, not to pick on my dad, he again later took his life. But I'd say, it's a beautiful day. It's going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> man who cares about tomorrow let's focus on today so it's so important and I want to ask and if you guys all get on the chat if you'd be so kind and I want you to just kind of want to kind of check the audience what has been your best coping mechanism through this pandemic if everybody can just pop in something real quick and I'd love to share that with the people that are on the call because there's oftentimes some real surprises that people have so Meditation, yes, who's that from? Oh, okay, good. And um, Monica, work, yes. Taking walks, Lori. Connor, is that you, medication? Thank you, bud. Uh, let's see, walking Monica, Zoom calls to connect. Yes, Jane, good point. Backyard barbecue. Myra, I'm there, just let me know when it is. I'll be there, that's great. Sewing and running. Gosh, there's so many things that you can do. And again, yeah, excellent stuff. Thank you. And it's so important because it just comes back to having choices. And we've all been around people that are positive or negative. You ladies, and again, Adonis and myself is the two gentlemen here. We've all had things happen to us that are bad in our lives. I've had a lot of bad stuff. You have all as well. And the question is, is how do you react to it? You go sit in the corner the rest of your life and cry and, and say, this just, life just sucks because life can incredibly suck at many times. Or do you say, at some point, I'm going to try to get up and wipe down the tear, wipe off the tears and get back in the race. And I will tell you, gratitude can do such a great job of that. And I have a couple of homework requests if I can. And these are just ones to keep in mind. I started doing something about uh, two or three months ago, and I decided I wasn't going to miss doing 10,000 steps every day. So I call it my gratitude walk, the daily gratitude walk. And I do a video on it and I put it on Instagram. And I get on there and I tell people about getting your exercise it's about a minute during the walk, and then focus on the gratitude theme of the day. What are you most grateful for? And it's an infinite number of things that you could be on uh, uh, gratitude, uh, grateful for. But I, I think it's a great thing to tie in exercise as well as your gratitude and tying the two together. It's just a great physical and mental effect on, on what you can do. So next thing I want to talk about is the science of gratitude. There's been a whole bunch of science research and things that have come up that have really, really changed, shows how it changed you mentally, physically, and psychologically too. And I'm just going to read this a second because these are a bunch of studies that were done and this has all been proven through science. And so I want you to know it's not just woo woo. And what is that gratitude guy talking about? But there's actually science behind it. it says this one study, appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health leading to fewer aches and pains, lower blood pressure and less depression. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, and schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we don't currently have. Let me just read that one again. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. Such a great point. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities to appreciate what we currently have right now. Focus on what we have and don't worry about what we don't have. Happiness is rarely constant. So although happiness is a fantastic goal, gratitude for the tools that get you there are more important. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for when the circumstances of life become unpleasant. Think again about coronavirus, COVID-19. And lastly, we are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards 
and we continually compare ourselves to others. That's why I like that first exercise. Why is it that person sees you in such a better light than you see yourself? We says science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, your health, your body, and your progress, the less anxiety you will experience. So that's why that when I do that again in live, and I've adapted it to Zoom with uh, your mother or your father or your biggest cheerleader, that when I do it live, I pair up and everybody takes a little card, a little three by five card like this. And I write, you are Monica and you are in this, I'm David. And then we exchange and we pair up and have two people do it. And I give them a minute to have them write everything about the other person, how they see them, you are. And what makes it so powerful, and it's still pretty good on Zoom, but what, ma what makes it so powerful is after that card is done, they read to each other what they wrote about. And it doesn't matter if they're total strangers, which just blows my mind. I can look at every one of you ladies, and I know what I'd be writing right now if I was sitting right across you, just by looking at you, looking at your smile and your interaction and how you, your body language and that type of thing. And it's amazing how often people just nail the person who they are. And every time I say to this, my favorite part of the exercise, now by show of hands, how many people will hold on to that card? Every single hand in the place goes up. And I think, wow. Isn't that fantastic? Because we're being seen by somebody else in the light. So if you're having a bad day, you can look at that card and it'll make you feel better. So very, very important. But the science of gratitude is, is really, it's, it's being shown to be something much more than, again, just woo-woo. So, okay, another assignment. So get on that same piece of paper. And I'm going to give you about uh, 60 seconds for this one. And this is what I call the most memorable moments in your life. The most memorable moments in your life. And I'm going to have you write, I'll give you 60 seconds, and in no particular order, write down anywhere from five to 10 of the most memorable events in your life as fast as you can. 60 seconds, go. Okay, and stop. And I'm going to ask you to complete that later. So, but I want to at least get you started because this is another homework I'm going to ask you to do for, for me, but uh, as importantly or more importantly for yourself. What I'd like you to do in the next, so this is Saturday. So maybe by next Saturday, that gives you a week. I would like you to take that list and expand that list out to 25, 50, or 100. And that's the top 25, 50, or 100 most memorable events of your life. And it'll take you some time and you'll think about it. So over a few days is really good. And then do yourself a favor also and make sure it's in the top priority order. And for instance, for me, number one, I think he might be on this call, is my son, Connor. And number two, you saw them in the video introduction, is my son, Kyle. And those are the two most memorable. And I will tell you, in the top 10 is also surviving my wife's death. She died of a prescription pill overdose at 38 years old. And my father's suicide and my mom's death and just various things and a lot of other tragedies. So, but just surviving those were memorable. But the important thing behind this is what I wanna get across to the brain is if you have a day where you're not feeling too good about your life and you look at the top 25 or 50 or 100, 100 most memorable things in your life, it will put you in a better mood. I can't believe I sometimes look at it and think, I haven't done anything in my life. You look at that video and you think, oh, this guy's jumped out of airplanes. I had my own airplane. I did all this crazy stuff. Hey, I didn't get into scuba diving and these other things. And yet there's days, and I love to be as transparent as I can get because I don't appreciate people that are BSing me on a talk or on a Zoom or whatever it might be, where I just thought, I haven't done anything in my life. I just think, what have you done? I mean, I was going to do this, this, and this. And then I started doing the same thing I tell people on my talks not to do. I started going down the road of regret and the road of I, I should have done this, should have, could have, would have, didn't. 
And so when you focus, and that's what gratitude does, is it gets you to focus on what you have. And when I looked at that list, it was amazing how differently it made me feel about my life. And so these things, that card where you see what that other person says about this, in this case, your mom or your dad, or your biggest cheerleader, or the top 25 or 50 or 100, those things are great to keep handy. So if you're having a bad day or it doesn't work out, uh, things aren't working out, it can definitely give you some help. Now, let's be honest, there's certain days, they're just blank, blank days, and there's nothing you can do except you got one goal, and that's to get to tomorrow. I've been down that road, I know all you have as well. And so, but on those times when that can at least help, it can definitely give something, but it's again, going back to gratitude and, and having gratitude makes making such a difference. So next thing I want to talk about, and I do talk pretty fast. I apologize. I have a little thing on my computer that says, slow down, like right in the right upper right hand corner, because I talk really fast and it says smile. Then people tell me, you don't smile enough. There's a smile. So the thing is, I've got a lot of stuff to say. I got to get it out fast. Next thing is a gratitude journal. The centerpiece of everything I talk about has to do with a gratitude journal. And, and I have one that I sell a lot of. They buy a bunch of these for the soldiers down at Joint Base Lewis McCord. I will put the links in, my, in the chat to buying one of these on Amazon. And I've also got how you can subscribe on YouTube and, and uh, get in touch with me if you need to. But this has been so important. And I tell people if they buy it, fantastic. But if you also just get a spiral notebook or anything else to help you, it is incredible what a difference it makes. And, and by, by high five, how many people have heard of a gratitude journal? Gosh, more and more all the time, almost everybody. And it used to be, I'd just be a handful of people that heard of it. But a gratitude journal is exactly what it describes itself to be, a journal that you write about what you're grateful for. And it's got a format to it, which we'll get into in a second. But there's, excuse me, there's a little saying in the upper left-hand corner. It says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. And there's something about, it's great to think about it, it's great to talk about it, but when you actually write down and everything that you're grateful for, here's today, obviously I wrote, I wrote it in again today, I tell people it just blows my mind. I do this big talk on gratitude in the gratitude journal. I sell books, you saw I've done a number of books. I go to my book table afterwards at the live events and people are like buying books and buying journals. I want some for my friends. And then I always have one of my own close by and I wrote in mine about an hour ago before I hooked up with, uh, with you ladies and, and uh, Donis. And so of course I I don't miss a day. What am I talking about? Gratitude. So this kid one day grabs, is this your gratitude journal? I go, yeah. And he, he says, can I look through it? I, I don't look too close. And he, and he looks through it. He kind of thumbs through it like this and he goes, wow, you write in this every day. And I went, like, did you just listen to the talk? Did you just hear the talk? Were you not like paying attention? Of course I do. No, I write in it occasionally. I suggest you write in every day. Me, just once in a while. So it's very, very important. So this is how this is formatted. Gratitude today, the day and the date. There's the daily number, which we're going to get to a little exercise in just a second. Two lines that say current events or special occasions. And so that's, you don't need a diary to go with it. Five or six lines for what you're grateful for two lines for the highlight of your day, and then your gratitude intentions, which is your gratitude for tomorrow on the right-hand side. I don't have time to go into that today, but that's just programming your brain, what you're gonna be grateful for that actually hasn't happened yet. And actually, I'll just tell you briefly, I used to say I'm grateful I'm speaking to hundreds of people, and then I had an audience of 100, then I'd said 1,000, then I was, I was doing 1,000, and then I got 1,000 people that came to a group, then I said 10,000, I got the soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord, then I said a million, now my YouTube videos have a million views. So it just, it's just programming your brain to be grateful for something that hasn't happened yet, and it will it'll actually work it in that direction. So that's what the gratitude intentions are about. So very, very important to know. But So here's what we're gonna do on this. Back to that same piece of paper. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about what I call your daily number. Now your daily number is a number between one and 10. 10 is the best day of your life, one is one of the worst days of your life. And you're not gonna be sharing this with anybody, so it's very, it's very personal. If you're having a great day, excellent. If you're having a bad day, it's okay. But I want you to assign yourself a number from one to 10. And again, 10 is the best day and one is the worst day. And you can do halves too. So you can be a seven and a half or a six and a half, but it's kind of taking your temperature is what it's doing. So put that number down on the piece of paper and write it down and put a circle around it. 
Okay, so you've got that number down. And again, just between the two of you, you, yourself, and I. So now another 30 seconds, and I'm going to have you write. I might give you 60 seconds on this. I want you to write down the things that you are grateful for in order of priority. If you could only pick one thing you're grateful for, what would that be? If you only pick two things, what would that be? And get those down as fast as you can, anywhere from five to 10 and 30 seconds, go. What are you most grateful for? Okay, and stop. So now, again, you've written those down, depending on how many you could get down there. And I used to, people ask me, what should I write? And I go, no, 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 I, I know what I would write, but I want you to figure out from your heart what you would write and what is that number one thing and number two thing and so forth. So now that you've written them down, I want you to reread them again slowly, just like before. And then when you get to the bottom, I want you to write another number for your daily number. Could be the same number, the number could have changed. But after reading those five or 10 things you're most grateful for, put another number down at the bottom of the page representing your daily number and circle it. Again, could be the same number, it could have changed. All right, looks like everybody's got it. So from the number at the top, from the number to the bottom, by a high five, how many people's number stayed the same? Okay, so by show of hands, high five from the top number to the bottom number, by a high five, how many people's number went up? Nine out of nine. I'm done. My talk is done. That's all I want to prove to you. That's all you need to know right there. You just found that's the key to this whole thing. I will say, and I say that live, nobody laughs. And I don't, I think that's such a funny line about it's done, but that just proves the point. That's a 60 second example of what a gratitude journal will do for you. So imagine if you're spending five minutes to write down that daily number, then go through those different things. It's almost, as you ladies and Adonis just proved to me, it's almost impossible to feel bad. And there's something about writing it down that it puts it, it plants it in your brain. They've proven it, that this thing is good, but there's nothing like, I so appreciate Monica and Adonis for inviting me today. I'm so grateful to have such good friends. You know, there's something about it that puts it in your brain and it's gonna sit there and it's gonna lodge itself in there better. So uh, do me a favor, grab your smartphones, grab your cell phones if you would, and I'm gonna give you this phone number, 206-371-8309, 206-371-8309. That is my phone slash text. I would like you to text me the number one thing you're grateful for. I just want to kind of pull the audience and it's just, it's fun for me to see what people think about because a lot of them are what I think are, it's what I would call obvious, but there's some amazing things. So 206-371-8309 and the one number one thing you're grateful for. Okay, thank you for doing that. So I will tell you, I mentioned earlier about being transparent. I think it's so important. I watch a lot of speakers and I go to a lot of webinars and, and uh, live events and so forth to try to perfect my speaking ability, skill, what have you. And one of the things that I think is really important is I think you have to practice what you preach and I think you have to be uh, authentic and transparent. And I will tell you that one of the things I struggled with in my life was depression. And I got it from my mom. My mom was manic depressive back when they called it that. Now it's called bipolar. And she used to do something to me that I think my mom is long since she died of cancer when I was young. But I, I just 
I still to this day, I cannot get over it. She would do this to me. There was five of us. I was number two of the five kids and the one who's kind of the most driven and the most outgoing in the family. So she would call me and she'd have a bottle of sleeping pills and it was on the old days of the old phones. And she would shake the pills like this and just go, David, you need to get over here to Magnolia and see me or I'm going to take all these sleeping pills in the next half hour and I'll be dead if you don't get here within the hour. And, and she would shake them like this on, on the phone. And what are you supposed to do in a case like that? So I would drive over there and see her and sit on her bed and talk to her and try to talk her through and be a good son and everything. But at some point she finally got lithium and then she gets cancer and dies. But I, I got left pieces of that. And it was so frustrating to me to get up and be depressed and thinking, what am I going to do? Which is why gratitude has been such an incredible bit, you know, of, uh, opportunity for me to see the glass from half full and to see the things in my life I need to look forward to as opposed to not focusing on the negatives. Well, one day as an example, now that you know how I describe the daily number, one day I woke up and I was a two. I might even been a one. I, I was so depressed. I had a talk to do that day and I was thinking, man, what is the point? I, I, I don't even get it. I mean, it was bad. And so I thought, well, I guess the first thing you better do is you better go write in your gratitude journal and, and practice what you preach and, and be, you know, doing the things you say to do. So I took the gratitude journal, went to Starbucks, got my latte, wrote everything down. It didn't help a little bit. It bumped me up to about a four or five. So that was better. I'm using eight, nine or 10 on most days. Today, I think it was a nine and a half. So it was just, it just most times it's pretty good. But that was bad. So, but at least that helped. Well, then I drove up to Burlington, Washington to do a talk. It was a chamber of commerce, about 150 people, huge group. So afterwards, I do the talk, and then I'm in, the, in line, and they're buying books and things, and, and this gal comes up to me, and she says, I need to tell you something. And I said, what's that? She goes, you just changed my life. And I'd never heard that before. And she's crying. She's got, like, tears kind of going down. She, I said, well, what was it? She goes, well, the story, the story you told about Connor, this, that, you, a couple other things. And she said, you just changed my life, and I, I want to give you a hug. So she gives me a hug, and she goes, can I buy a journal for me, and can I buy it for a couple of my kids? And I said, sure. And I, and I signed them and everything. And, and so... Then I'm done and I'm wrapping up and I'm, I'm going out to the car and I go out to the car in Burlington to get back to Seattle. I get in the car and I look in the rearview mirror and I look at myself and I realize now I'm a nine. And I'd gone from a one to a two to a four to a five by writing in my gratitude journal to a nine to almost 10 because somebody told me I changed their life. And I've never been a drinker or smoker or drugs. It's just not my deal. But there is no drinking, no smoking, no drugs. And Dana died of a prescription pill overdose, Oxycontin and Vicodin and that terrible stuff. Never did that stuff. Never did a powder. Never did a joint. You know, all this thing. These are all ways that people do to try to cope. And I went, wow. I wrote in my gratitude journal and I helped somebody today. And I know it's so important. I tell people all the time, you want to help yourself, help us help other people. So incredibly important. So that's how powerful it is. And if you totally focus on that, It'll, it can shift that mindset. And that's a true story of mine that is just so incredibly important. So um, moving on, I wanna, I wanna wrap up in about 10 minutes here. So I wanna keep going here. Uh, I mentioned that if you, if you find, if you wanna help yourself, help others. It's so incredibly important. It'll, if you get you, it'll help you get through this madness and things. And, and I guess to start concentrating on other people instead of you. That card back there when how your biggest cheerleader sees you, I think it's great that we're self-effacing in some ways, but, but not too much, but really appreciate who you are. I sent out these, these Monday morning minutes that I'll, I'll show you a way to get connected to those in a second. But one of the things, they always have a different topic every Monday morning. It's a one minute video and goes out about six or seven in the morning. And one of my favorite topics once was confidence and humility. There's, no, there's such a great combination. Be confident, but also be humble. So appreciate that, but also have a great relationship with that person in the mirror. Write in the gratitude journal, rereading some of those lists, being aware of those top memorable items, seeing how somebody else, your biggest cheerleader, sees you. All those things will help you get a better relationship or keep it more consistently with yourself, too. So uh, quickly, I'm actually going to do this module real fast. I, want, I didn't want to... I want to keep moving along here, but I call it find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. I keep saying this relationship with yourself is so important. Your passion is the next thing. If you can find your passion, what did you want to be when you grew up? What would you do if you got a million dollars in your checking account every single day and couldn't possibly spend it? What if somebody gave you everything else was handled? What would you do? What would you be passionate about? I think that ultimately leads to your purpose. Having a great relationship with yourself, finding your passion, 
on your purpose. When I was, I wanted to be a speaker when I was 19 years old. It says in the video, I was 19 at the University of Washington. Well, that was 1969. So I'm like 62 years old, seven or eight years ago, when I finally get the guts to become a speaker. I wanted to be a speaker my entire life, 45 years, never did it. And people, I thought you are going to be a speaker. And so, and I, I believe Connor, my younger son, may be on the call as well. And so December 26, uh, 19, uh, excuse me, 2012, I believe it was. And I come home, I'm working at Lowe's, I'm managing a Lowe's home improvement store. And I come home from work and Connor, who's now 17, he was four when Dana passed away and my older son was 14. And Connor is 17, and he's sitting on the couch and I come home, it's about two in the afternoon. He goes, what are you doing home? And I said, I quit. He goes, what do you mean you quit? And I go, uh, I, I quit. You quit Lowe's? And I went, yeah. You quit being a store manager? I went, uh, yeah. He goes, well, what are you going to do now? And I went, well, I'm going to be a speaker. And Connor looks up from the couch and he goes, well, that's just super dad. <laughs> that, wasn't the expect that wasn't the answer I was expecting of the response I got. He goes, I have a question for you. I go, what's that? He goes, what are we going to do for food? And so I went, well, I'm, I'm, I'll work on that point. But I finally got to my passion at 62 years old. I'm now seven zero. I can't believe it's seven and a zero. And after that, but I get to do what I want. So I tell people, get a great relationship with yourself. Find out what your passion. I don't care the ages of any of you nice looking ladies or Adonis or anybody. It's never too late. And this is why I'm going to do this to 80 or 90 or whatever the good Lord blesses me on this planet. But it's all about if you can find yourself, find your passion passion, you'll find your purpose. And I think most of us, not everybody, but I think most of us want to figure out at some point what our purpose is. So one last thing to relate back to yourself. If I was in person, I have a $20 bill here and I would go up to everybody and I'd say, would you just take this $20 bill if I just gave it to you? And most people I think would say yes. And I go, okay, so let me ask you something here. I can't do it through Zoom. So if I do this, I take that $20 bill and I do like that. And I say, now would you still take it? I think most people would probably take it. It's all crunched up. If I put it on the floor and stomped on it with my foot, and then I smoothed it out and said, there's the $20 bill back flat again, would you take it? And I think, again, most people would take it. So if I look at Andrew Jackson, and I say, Andrew Jackson, let me tell you something. You're a piece of crap. I think you're worthless. I think you're not only a piece of crap, I don't think you deserve to even be on this planet. And you know what Andrew Jackson would do? He would look at me back from the $20 bill and say, well, let me tell you something, Mr. Speaker man. You can tell me whatever you want, but I am still worth 20 bucks. And he would be right. All that stuff. So why is it occasionally, myself included, we let somebody crush us, step on us, tell us we're full of crap, we don't belong on this earth, or worst of all, worst, worst, worst of all, devalue us from 20 to 15 to 10 to 5 to the most terrible part of all, zero. It's happened to me. It's happened to a lot of people. Don't ever let it happen. I will tell you, gratitude and focusing on your strengths and your blessings in this world will be like the best Teflon or the best armor to keep that from happening to you. So very, very important. So but I want you to, a couple last things. Now, do me one more favor. This is a homework. If you want to help yourself, help others. So this is homework, but I want you to uh, write down right now the names of three. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it as homework. Sometime in the next two or three days, I want you to promise me. You got, you got to give me a high five in the thing you promised me. You don't even know what it is yet. Boy, there's faith. I'll tell you. Thank you. For that. I want you to write down the names of three people you're going to reach out to and help. There's three people that you're going to reach out and help. You're either going to ask them if you can send them a note or send them a note. You're going to call them. You're going to text them. You're going to voicemail them. Uh, send them a note or send them a card. Uh, get on a Zoom call. Uh, see if there's anything you can do for them. And back, I've noticed that over and over again, just like that day I was so depressed and that woman, Michelle was her name, said, you just changed my life. Wow, I just changed somebody's life. And that took me from that two up till that nine. So, so, so very important. So. Uh, okay, so a couple more things, and then I'm going to wrap up here. Um, people ask me a lot, how can I get more gratitude in my life? And I will tell you, I just put in the chat, 
I have, there's a schedule link I'll get to in a second, but that's my contact information. The Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal is in there and there's my email and my phone and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. My LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram accounts are all there. But people ask me a lot, how do I get more plugged in to me so I can keep this a focus for mine? So one thing is, if you'd like, get those cell phones out again and write this number down. 42828 is the number, 42828. And if you want to get my Monday morning minute, it goes out every Monday at 6 in the morning, as I mentioned, it's one minute long. Go to text to 42828, text the word grateful. Just the basic word grateful, G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L. Type in the number 42828 in the number and in the message. Type in grateful and hit send and it'll ask you for your email. <laughs> okay, as I mentioned too, on the gratitude journal, which I'm very passionate about, you can buy mine, but uh, if you get one that's a spiral, that's also um, something certainly that's fine as well. So a couple other things I'm gonna mention before I wrap up and I've got about three or four minutes and then we're gonna get uh, put all together. Uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of personal things. So you can probably tell I'm very passionate about this speaking and about coaching and, or about speaking about gratitude and so forth and all that it can do for you. In fact, as I said, I got to look at the thing where I have to slow down. So if you could just take a minute and if you get to it today, if not later, if you can think of anybody that hire speakers or bring speakers in, association you might be a part of, a company or a corporation, please send me an email. It's David at That Gratitude Guy. And if it's in the next 24 hours, you think of somebody, I get a lot of referrals, which I really appreciate. And that's number one. And then number two is, another thing I wanna share is the opportunity to work together one-on-one -on -one or in a group if you're interested. I actually do a lot of coaching and I help people to use gratitude principles to reframe their attitude in their life. And so what I do is I offer people uh, complimentary cons consultations, a 45 to 60 minute phone call. And I cover three things in that phone call. First, I always like to give more value. I like to hear people's story and get to hear more about them and then the challenges that they're facing in life. And then I can give people feedback from our conversation and provide some insights after 70 years on the planet. And then secondly, I'm listening to see if we might be a fit to work together as a coach. I love working with people and I'm really selective about who I want to work with, people that really want to make changes and not negative people that just want to be turned into a positive person. And thirdly, it gives you a chance to kind of interact with me and determine if that would be a benefit for you to work with me. So if for any reason that's you, there's a scheduler link in my in, into the uh, chat rather and you can schedule an appointment in there or you can just send me a note and your name and phone number and we can do that consultation so all right so last thing I want to talk about today is sharing gratitude and I will tell you oh wait I get one more quick thing do me a favor in the chat please type in your number one takeaway from today what was the biggest thing hopefully there's more than one but type in the chat your biggest takeaway from the last 35, 40 minutes. All right. Refocus on a positive life. Need to pause, be aware. Excellent, excellent comment, Monica. Journal to focus, Jane. Yep, change my focus to what I have instead. Yep, excellent, excellent. Thank you all. Okay, last thing I'm going to do to wrap up here, I call this sharing gratitude. Keep your phones handy. It's the last thing we're going to do today. I think it's so important that we share people that I, I used to bring up occasionally when people got into network marketing, how. And then I realized there's a lot of people in network marketing that probably didn't like me to say this, but they're so excited. They, they just, they want to show you the little bottles of this oil that'll do this. And so can we have coffee? And so, but I can't blame them for, for getting excited because I want to share that. And so uh, what I want to do today is I want to share some gratitude and I call this the four T's as in the letter T, text, tweet, telephone, or tell. I will tell you right now, most people text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you 60 seconds. I promise this is the last 60 second exercise and then we're done. 
60 seconds, I want you to text somebody in your life to tell them how grateful you are to have them in their life, your life. And I want you to use the word grateful, anybody you want, send them a brief text, I'll give you 60 seconds to knock that text out. Okay, in the junior highs, they've already knocked out five or six texts. And then when I do the senior centers, it's like, can you help me? And it's like, they're doing like, we have to allow some extra time. I'm not far from that senior center, so I understand that. But anyway, so I try to, I try to allow it. By the way, whereas I just saw Lori change my focus to what I have instead of what I don't have. Thank you, Lori. That, that is as good a comment as there can be in terms about that, that focusing on what you have. And I get You've heard the glass half full and half empty, but I just, I think it's so important. But uh, thank you. Thank you for all that feedback. So I will tell you that people come up to me and they have their phones like this. And I'm again, back at the book table. And um, by the way, just so this is only for Adonis, just so you don't think I've gotten too carried away about being Mr. Author and doing a few books. Well, it's kind of for Monica too. So one day I'm doing a drawing and it's like the cards for all the people. And there's like 200 people in the room or they got a whole bunch of cards. So they pull out the card and there's a gal named Sally that wins it. So I've got a little book packet up front, you know? And so I, so she walks up, they're all clapping. Good job, Sally. You got your card picked out of the basket. And I hand her the books. I go, congratulations. She goes, thanks. And she turns to walk back to her seat. And I went, you know, by the way, later, if you'd like, I'll sign that for you. She looks back and she goes, that's okay. I just went, okay, good. Clearly, I haven't attained any authorship status, but maybe someday that's important. But anyway, when people come up to the to the thing and they show me the text, so they show me the text and it says, I'm so grateful for you. It's really cool. But then here's one that says, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? <laughs> wow. Gosh, can it just be like with no strings attached? And then another one recently was, um, are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> And I just went, wow. But one of my all-time favorites was at the Bothell uh, Performing Arts Center. And it was uh, kind of a big you know, place where the seats go up like this. And there's a lady who's about 15 feet away from me. I was on the stage. And uh, she was calling. She was actually using this as a telephone. Imagine that. And so she's talking. And I can hear her from the stage. I'm giving everybody the, the 60 seconds. And she goes, yes, honey, I just want to let you know how grateful I am for you. I'm assuming it was her husband. And I just think, I just am so thankful. I'm so grateful. I'm so appreciative. And I just, I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> I just, oh, it's your idea. It's not my idea. Gosh, get with the program here. So it's so important to share. And as I say, just, you promised me on that homework, you'll contact three people and, and help them in any way. That's sharing certainly in its best. But I will tell you, there's a many, <clears throat> the journey you ladies and Adonis, it, and all of it has been down, is an extremely difficult journey to say the very least. I just tell people that gratitude as a mindset and an attitude of gratitude, and it's a vehicle is a great word, to at least help along the way, understanding that this life is this huge series of ups and downs, and you know the ups are great, the downs suck, but the downs are kind of where we learn our lessons, and we want to get back to the ups again, and at least gratitude can help. I tell you, it's changed and transformed my life and probably saved my life. And it can do the same for you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you all. Cool. So we'll stay on um, for a while, Dave, if you're okay with that. And is yeah, any, any questions, comments, uh, anything that anybody has for a moi? I just want to say I am really 
thankful for you coming today and it was great timing for me because I've had a week of being in limbo in every area in my life and it's just been a really hard week oh, and wow. um, I needed to focus on what I have and not what I'm waiting for to happen or oh, that excellent. kind of thing. So thank you. You bet. You bet. You're welcome. Thank you, Lori. And you know, it makes me think of too, when I, after Dana passed away and I went to a support group and I would try to explain this to people that hadn't suffered the losses that we've all suffered. And, and I said, there was something about sitting in that room with 15 to 18 people. My name is David Brooke. My wife, Dana died September 29th, 1998. We have two sons, Connor's four, Kyle's 14, you know, and to watch the other heads go like this, and to nod and understand and realize that your family and friends and all these other people have no clue. And I tried to be nice to them, but sometimes I didn't want to be nice. Just get away from me. You have no idea. And so to me, to have a group where you get together like Gold Star or anybody that's gone down those paths, is just so affirming. And just to know, to your point, Lori, that there's going to be days, weeks that are bad, but if we just hang in there, probably next week or next day will be better. And, and that's one of the reasons why I just enjoy this gratitude thing so much because it really, really helps and gives you a good framework. Yeah, so. All right, guys and gals, anything else? What was okay. the thing besides passion um, in order to find your purpose? Um, well, the first one is find yourself. That's, I always feel that's the first phase is to have a great relationship with yourself. And then the passion uh, is next. And then I think that leads to your purpose. And I, I find people occasionally, Andy, that don't have never said they didn't really worry about their purpose. I suppose that's true. At least for me, I finally found mine. It took me 62 and a half years to figure out what I really wanted to do. And now I can't imagine the rest of my life doing anything different. But, but the reason I like the, the thing around the passion is if you have, if people aren't sure what their passion is leading to their purpose, I like those little examples of the million dollars in the bank every morning or any of those things. What did you want to do when you grew up? Or if all the, or what would you do and you couldn't get paid for it? Just you did it because you love it. And, you know, I finally, after a long time to, to Connor's point about what are we going to do for food, I finally get paid significant amounts of money now for these keynotes and talks. And, but man, it was, it was a long road to get there. And so, but what drove me more than anything else was just the passion. Every time somebody tells me I changed their life, it's like the highlight of my day and I'm a 10. And, and I even noticed too, with doing this, whether it's a small group or a large group or whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever mood I'm in, after this is done, I'm always a 10. Always a 10. It's just, I've gotten, I've just noticed that. So, but yeah, really finding that, Andy, is just, uh, sometimes it's, it's trial and error, but, but that's, that's how I look at it. I think that that leads you to your purpose. There was a thing I didn't mention it, but um, I think about somebody like Joe Paterno uh, passed away about 60 days after he was fired from Penn State. Bear Bryant passed away about three months after he quit at Alabama. And uh, Andy Rooney passed away about a month after he left 60 Minutes. And if that is an example of somebody, you know, changing or losing their purpose, I don't know what is if somebody dies that closely after they've done something. So I just think, however, and, and one of the things I, I don't always bring up age, but I sometimes try to use this as an incentive because, you know, I'm not 20 anymore, but, you know, it was 62 that I started this uh, eight years ago, and it doesn't matter. Colonel Sanders is one of my heroes. He was 63. J.C. Penney was 56. Ray Kroc was 54. Mary Kay Ash was 58. I mean, so it's never too late. It's just, it's just never too late. And we all know a lot of people. Uh, I think about the uh, JBLM soldiers and the, the 22 suicides a day and everything. And I just, I, I do a lot of speaking down there. And it's just so, I just try to offer, here's something to try. Here's something that, you know, it might help understanding that it's, it can be brutally hard. So. Thank you. You bet. You bet. All right, ladies. Well, Miss Monica, if you can send me the uh, recording and the chat thing too, that would be great. Thank you I for recording. So. Yeah. And if you have anything else comes up, David at that gratitude guy, but uh, it's been nice to meet you all. And uh, thank you so much. And again, Monica, thank you. And thanks to Adonis too. Thank you very much, David. Bye. Okay. We'll Take see you on ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Bye, David. Bye. David, I just wanted to say. I think he's
Yeah. I think he jumped off. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome to text them, email them. Um, I'll re-put everything um, on the Facebook page, but he does have a lot of, I think, you, Marsha, you'd already seen some of his YouTube videos and um, definitely reach out to him. You've got okay. his phone number. Text away. All right. <laughs> Thanks for setting it up. Well, good. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 Great. Now I want to hire him as a speaker at the library. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, he, he's a great guy. Does he live in Edmonds? Uh, he lives in Issaquah. Oh, oh, he said that. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, I think we've known him, well, forever. Adonis, how long have you known him? Oh, God. Since 1980. Something 1980 something. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, we've definitely known David a long time. So, yeah, just to, I just want to say so I used to work at Nordstrom in Spokane, and I would come to Seattle. And the first time I met Dave was in Seattle. And the guy got me so pumped up and so inspired.